experience will be in English. I'm very pleased to introduce you to Maria Jesus Dominguez and Juan Carlos Martinez. They come from Julio Caro Baroja High School in Ghetto. And they have kindly accepted our invitation to take part in Ghetto Lingue and to tell us about some of the projects they are developing with their students. Maria Jesus will speak to you about the optional subject they offer at non-compulsory secondary level, or at communication in English, and how students work on different topics and develop a final project focusing on oral production. Juan Carlos teaches drama in English to first secondary students. He develops what I would call the infinity project. He doesn't know I call it like this. I call it the Infinity Project because it goes beyond the classroom and pervades students' lives. Thank you very much to both. The floor is yours.
going to concentrate now a little bit, showing you different projects that our students have prepared in this subject. This subject is called COIN, we call it at our school. It used to be optional English, now it is called Comunicación Oral en Lengua Inglesa. So what we do is we offer this project, uh, this uh, subject for first and second year of bachillerato. So sometimes we have mixed groups of the two different levels in the same class with very different levels of English. People who don't really know a lot of English and people whose level is so good that they want to practice more. And uh, so sometimes it is very difficult. How can you make uh, students improve their oral skills if you have such a varied in different or such a different level in the same group. Now the groups are not uh, big, but they are not small either. I mean this year for example, uh, 19, 15 is yours, mine is 19. So uh, quite a lot of students. So we really find that one possibility or a very good po possibility to for them to really improve their oral skills is through projects. Okay? So, uh, we have the help of the assistant teacher, of course, you can see him helping. Then we have them uh, using, I don't know, getting into the project, being motivated. So in this case, you can see them how they dressed up, yes, for the um, theater thing, okay? Oh, sorry. Uh, now, let's go here. But I, but I just prepared this, okay, and it is a very simple website, I love the website too. Adela and all these people <laughs> who are teaching me. Okay, so I just prepared something, some very simple thing to show you the different projects that our students have produced, okay? So, um, in the introduction, at the beginning of the school year in September, what they did is just a very simple practice. They brought uh, the pictures from their school holidays, okay? And so what they, they had to do is the first oral presentation. So they had to follow this advice, which I agreed with them, okay? They decided that it was about, uh, at the beginning, they said only three minutes. Then they realized that three minutes was not enough because they wanted to talk for a longer time. Then the length had to be respected, so about 10 minutes, and it had to be, the topic had to be very well organized, and they had to be very careful with the body language. So the beginning of how to look at the audience, yes? And then they had to take into account as well um, the accuracy of their language. With a good intonation, they should be fluent enough, and they should be careful with their mistakes. Yes. Then, uh, when they finished doing their presentation, this is just one of the girls who presented this. When they finished their presentation, they had to evaluate each other. So this is the evaluation sheet that we designed for them. They just gave the name and. They took into account the different things that they had to prepare or they knew before giving their presentation. Okay? So, this was the first activity. So, they started getting into contact with what we wanted them to do. Then, in the second activity, what we did is we worked with topics. Okay? So, there are the different topics. The first topic is uh, films, talking about films. We work a lot with vocabulary, uh, they read film reviews, uh, we read articles about magazines, we watch uh, people, for example, a dialogue in which two girls are, um, are agreeing to meet and go to the cinema. Okay, so, uh, we prepare them a lot, yes? And the last task or their final product of their project will be a film review. It can be a very simple thing. In fact, uh, I don't know, like, Two years ago, last year, I think this was two years ago, you can see that they just prepared a short film review, okay? So what we wanted them to do is prepare a longer one, but using pictures. We didn't want them to, to read, yes? We wanted them to show uh, pictures and use those pictures to talk. So 
we then prepared a PowerPoint presentation. The, in the PowerPoint presentation, they just gave, they just showed pictures, and through these pictures, they were in fact talking, or they were telling the rest of the students the film review that they had already prepared. So they had it written down, yes, but they were not seeing it. And then with these pictures at the end, they even made links here to parts, for example, in one of the, in what happens in Las Vegas, they found a, a lot of links in, in YouTube to um, different scenes of the film. So they loved that, yes? And they talked about the different films, the different scenes, what they represented. And finally, what they did, all of them, yes, is a, a link to the trailer, okay? They, they love that as well. So they they are practicing their listening skill as well. Hmm? Now, this was, as you can see, you've got here several other ones, yes? For example, some of them are more, I don't know, more imaginative or they even create their own stories and... Now, uh, as a consequence of this film review, we talked about films, we talk about literature, yes, of course, and then finally what we did is to talk about the theatre. So here is with the help of Carlos, yes, who loves the theatre. So uh, last year, for example, we did two performances. One was uh, Romeo and Juliet and the other one was The Taming of the Shrew. This year is just uh, Romeo and Juliet, okay. yes, okay. And the younger ones, the ones in the first year of ESO, what they did is they were the public for the ones in bachillerato. And so later on with the younger ones, they, they, we recorded them telling the story of Romeo and Juliet. So they also took part, yes, the ones who are taking part in the drama <coughs> um, subject. Now, uh, then the next uh, topic was the sports. Uh, this year, especially this year, we have worked a lot with vocabulary, yes? We realized that they needed vocabulary hmm? about how to talk about sports. So last year we, we did a, a lot as well about, um, I don't know if you remember the Chilean miners who were trapped, yes? So we, we started talking about the risks that people take in life, yes? Some of them take a lot of risks in their normal jobs. Now in this case it was about risky sports. Uh, they finally they what they had to do the final product was a glove store. A glove store in which they had to <coughs> describe the sport, the equipment needed, advantages, disadvantages. Okay, here in this page I, I just selected these two because they are a little bit different. This is training, the jungle, and the other one which is I don't know if you know about this chess boxing. It is a kind of new sport. Okay, then most say it is boxing and playing chess. Okay, in Chile. so it's something quite strange. I didn't know about that. So most of them, of course, a uh, quicker closer about skydiving, skateboarding. Yes, but these were a little bit more uh, original. Um, then. That was just like the first term. In, this, in the beginning of the second term, in January, we started with the, the other topic, yes? We still have to, this topic and the other one, yes? Now, in this two years ago, no, three years ago, I think we started with the Indian, project about India. We have both been to India, we love India, so we thought it was a very good um, place for them to learn, yes? To learn things about a different place and to, to create something to show the rest of the students about the country that they knew or they were learning about. So we gave them some topics <coughs> and they had to choose from these topics, yes? Uh, so each student chose one or two of the different topics and they concentrated on these topics, not the rest, yes? And they prepared a project. Uh, in the project, it could be in word, document in word, of course, in which they had to, they needed a 
cover, the cover has disappeared. I don't know where it is, but it was there. Yes, okay. <laughs> the index, all the different uh, aspects of what she was talking about, yes. And finally, they had to add as well <coughs> the bibliography. So where they took all this information from. Okay, now, uh, we wanted them not only to use the PowerPoint, but also to work with the Word documents so that they will be able, when they go to university, to do these kind of projects at university as well. Yes, and they had, in this case, what they had to do is they had to explain it orally, so they had the Word document. So, some of their students uh, decided to do a PowerPoint, yes? For example, this one. But in this PowerPoint, it was only about the Taj Mahal, and the problem was that they had, or we found, that they had like too many words in the... Yes? Okay, for example, this slide is full of things, yes? So all the things were here. Of course they did a lot of work, but everything was there. We wanted them to use just the pictures, so we them to use the language. Then, last year we changed. Instead of doing India, we decided about South Africa because of the, the football championship, yes? And we also use the same, the same models, okay, the same structure with the topics, then a Word document or a PowerPoint, okay? But this year we wanted to change and we decided to do the English in the World project, okay? It is in which each student decides on one, one different country, we gave them different possibilities. We gave them um, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, India, Canada, Ireland, the USA, South Africa, and Australia. All of them. And then what they had to do, we wanted them to think about the British Empire as well. Yes, the Commonwealth. Learn, learning a little bit through English. And they had to present this. And in this PowerPoint, they had to include First, um, let's see what I've got here. They had to include the geographical location, then history. In a little bit about history, they had to include a kind of timeline if they could. And then, talk about culture, music, religion, <coughs> sports, food, examples, yes. And they had to finish their presentation with a trip in the country. And in this trip in the country, we wanted them, if they could, to use the word geolocation. Okay, so using a little bit uh, the new uh, technological uh, tools. Now, this one, for example, the United Kingdom, uh, the PowerPoint is good, but I think that it is worth seeing what they prepared. Okay, they prepared this document with all the information. Yes? And then they used the images in the PowerPoint to talk about this. So, uh, composition of the country, currency, weather, important cities, languages. For example, here, when they talk about Wales, they, they have a link to somebody in the news uh, talking in Welsh. Yes? Then talking about sports, about food, superstitions, I don't know why they chose that, religion, festivals and traditions, and then top 10 places to visit. So here, for example, this group, they tried to do the geolocation, so then they did it, but then the link didn't work, okay? And finally, the timeline. The timeline, they prepared all these things as well. Yes, so you have and this is a very exhaustive really work, I think, yes? And you can see what they did and they took and all the, as well, they gave all the bibliography where they got that information from. Now, uh, for example, in this one about Canada, let's see, um, you've got the important cities, of course, the languages, you've got different, yes, the English, Religions. Now, this this is a beautiful one, I think. The history. How do I put it bigger? Okay. 
Okay, this uh, was uh, instead of using the uh, time toast or repeat, it was impossible to use in, in January, February. It was impossible, we couldn't. Eh? So they, some of them used uh, a time toast, which is another tool. So this one, we did it there. And uh, finally, let's see if the link works. It was, they had one of these, the geolocation. Okay, so they went from Bilbao to Canada. They, hmm? Okay, so they used, as you can see, we tried them to use different tools. Yes? <coughs> uh, well, all these things are will be in the in the web page, in the school web page. Okay, we will put them there so that you can have a look if you want. Hmm? Yes? Now, uh, the next topic, I think, yes, is recipes. Yes? We created this, uh, of course, uh, talking about food is another of the topic, very interesting topic. We work a lot with food, eh? and uh, then what they, what they do is they create their own recipe, they prepare it, and this year they wanted to be more creative. So they um, did it at home. They asked for this. They wanted to prepare their food at home, yes, and then they showed their pictures and they gave the presentation to the rest of the students. So this was much better because you could see that they, they didn't read anything in steps or anything. They just showed the pictures and they were explaining what to do and how to do it. And then uh, to evaluate, for example, this is a, an example of the evaluation that we... Uh, this is something that I agree with them. They, they told me, okay, and it was Lucas, the assistant teacher, was with me that day as well, and they decided, okay, what are the things that we are going to evaluate in, in the recipes? And they decided on this. On the one hand, your presentation with different aspects. On the other hand, the PowerPoint, how good it was, if it was really good enough. Some of them had also prepared videos on home mm -hmm. as well, yes? And finally, they gave extra points for food quality because, of course, they brought their food to school and we can eat This is really motivating. It does motivate them. Okay? And finally, uh, just uh, for you to know a little bit, okay, different aspects, different books that we use. We follow kind of first certificate uh, textbooks like Gold, uh, Activate, we adapt them, we use some of these activities. Then we use a lot of scholastic, a lot of scholastic, all these uh, teen life, for example, uh, the uh, customs and lifestyle in the United Kingdom in uh, in USA. Uh, then listening extras, speaking videos. Then we also use a lot of the National Geographic small. Um, they've got like books and they've also got um, videos. Okay, and then. Romeo and Juliet, always the books, and the um, Mary Glasgow magazines to get articles from there. Okay. So I think this is um, more or less what we. Yes? What we do. And here. So this is uh, up to coin. Yes? And now Carlos will talk about drama. Yes? yes. His work. Okay, welcome to my talk. I usually tell my students, welcome to my class, because uh, you're not very sure if they feel like that. <laughs> well, we have started our project of telling what is them. And uh, they told me that uh, I could prepare a drama work or something like that. I'm going to show you uh, some pictures about how to work in a drama course. But uh, the things you are just watching here could be done for a history class, a class of literature, a class of natural science, if you want to change the way of viewing things in class. All right? The first question, is it difficult to become an English drama teacher? Well, at the beginning when you hear the word drama, theater, you say, 
a very just different, uh, not a traditional class. Uh, everybody uh, must be there enjoying, <laughs> enjoying things. And uh, we think that it's a sort of feel of uh, some flowers before entering the classroom. And uh, the moment you enter, you see that you have to jump uh, over some things. Not a fence, maybe a wall or something even higher. And that you can't go with your color and tie, that perhaps you, you have to go there mm, completely dressed up and disguised. You know your experience, we are the best actors in the world, we teachers, okay. And probably we have a, a sort of uh, contacts, uh, people who have influenced us in life. Uh, uh, so we have a lot of things to say, but, uh, but uh, we have never been to a formal drama class before. But we know a lot of people, all of them the teachers, how to uh, behave, how to work, uh, how to uh, move where you don't know where. But all these things you have learned in your life, in our 33 years at the school, teaching at the school, mean nothing. Because when you enter the class, you have no book, you have no special classroom, it's a normal class, where every day you have to remove chairs and uh, you have to put them, to tidy them uh, at the end of the class, and you don't know the kids, uh, and uh, they are not as you thought. Because uh, it's their parents who decided uh, to teach them drama, not them or you. All right, so, uh, we have a lot of resources. We start with warming up activities. We know that it's the best way to create uh, a different atmosphere. Even, yes, even you don't let them come into the classroom uh, as they go, but you stop them at the entrance so that they can get ready to go to a special class. In this, with the warming up activities, as you know, because you use them every day, all right, we, we teach them how to work in pairs, in groups, and as a team. But uh, where are these warming up activities? Of course, we, everybody has been to the British Institute to learn something about these things, uh, and then you review, you pass courses, or, of course, the net is ready to help you, all right? But it's not so easy. And then you decide to make something different. You establish the, the holy spot so that when they enter the class, they know that there is something different to do. And you think that puppeteering is a very good way to help because through them you can discover their attitudes, likes, interests, preferences. And the best way is by means of two characters. Mr. or Miss Sympathy, Mr. or Miss, uh, Miss uh, Complaints. Why? Because uh, as they use, uh, and they don't use their own uh, voice, but they distort their voice, they can say anything. It's not them. They can talk positively or negatively about anything. And uh, uh, it's not me. It was the puppet. Okay? So, in the first day, they show their fears and satisfactions at the school by means of them, by telling what they like or they dislike. While these things are happening in class, of course, you have to show them you are, that you are a very modern teacher. And then you go to YouTube and show them different uh, videos about uh, elements of the drama, how to be an actor, uh, some special plays, etc., etc. And they understand that uh, you do something different from the other classes. Okay. You know that uh, your colleagues are working hard uh, in their normal, traditional, or not so traditional classes, and they don't know that, as you know, if you start working on the same uh, topics, uh, on the same grammar structures they are doing in, in their classes, and you start uh, uh, just making dialogues with them. And uh, they consider that, uh, wow, we have been all in class only for three or two weeks and we know how to speak in class because they are reproducing what they learned in class and now, uh, with a little help, uh, they feel more confident uh, 
to do, to do it by themselves. But uh, after a short time, they need something else. They need uh, a sort of content because it, it's not time. It's not a time only to play, only to repeat uh, dialogues, uh, small dialogues, easy dialogues. Then you have to think about uh, where to find uh, these sketches and plays, and what to do with them, and how to work with them. Because it's been a short time to know them. As usual, you go to your own books, to your library, and uh, you go and you visit God's Dominion, the net. You find there everything. And then you visit uh, Loli. <laughs> <laughs> And God only gives you not thousands or hundreds, uh, she gives you millions <laughs> of names, okay? Which is a big problem. Because she, she tells you with the very big smile, that's for you. <laughs> and then uh, you tell her, uh, for how many days, for how many years to work on okay? But uh, anyway, from time to time, so you are a lucky man or a lucky woman, and uh, you find uh, things. Okay, and then you choose some of them, the ones you think that they uh, are good for your kids, you never know, okay, and you start uh, a little by little a different step of preparing the drama, sitting down with them, either in a circle, in the different ways we know, then you pay attention to uh, their pronunciation and intonation, just at the end uh, of the school year, I mean last week, uh, you find that some of these sketches or plays they have uh, an oral support, but you don't know it at the beginning, all right? And finally, you start the stage reading after the first week, because the week has only two periods. Meanwhile, we go on playing games, uh, contact games, movement games, because uh, as they are 12, 13 years old, Sometimes they, they don't know how to respect themselves uh, and how to touch uh, their classmates. Uh, and then games let you uh, make things different uh, and to have uh, a natural relationship. Okay? You discover that uh, they don't know they don't know the word rhythm. They are supposed to dance a lot, to sing a lot, but uh, most of the need some support in the rhythm Okay, and did you recover some of the games when you were a child? Christmas, Mom and Girl, do you remember the game of the mirror? Okay, it's great. And they don't only uh, practice different things with the games, but they also retell uh, what they are doing at the same time. Improvisation games are great. Because you just tell them a word, or you just tell them, for instance, the, the name of, of, a, of a story, of a tale, and they do it. You tell them, for instance, it's not white, and everybody remember the seven dwarfs. And those who can't yet go and improvise the scene, they retell the story. Well, this is the story about a uh, little girl, whatever. And uh, there are so many games that you need a special force just to play them all. What? The different types. Okay? We pay attention, special attention on word games uh, to make dialects and tests, to review vocabulary and structures. They have, remember, previously uh, taught, been taught or learned in class. And uh, again, we use different types to make small dialogues. They don't know yet, but uh, all those games they are played, all those, uh, all these uh, dialogues that they are writing and improvising will take part or will be part of something more important. And we start the so-called creativity games. But sometimes, after a while, uh, as you know, all our kids get completely tired and exhausted, and you need to, to motivate them in a different way. Well, music. If you ever want to motivate them, whatever your subject is, uh, please give them music. It helps uh, a lot uh, and uh, it makes them change their, their abilities. Because though they may be 
very hard to understand, to memorize, uh, to perform uh, anything you give them. Whenever you give them a song, they forget everything. Since that very moment, uh, they enjoy, uh, the class relaxes, and they consider that things uh, are different. Okay? But, uh, we have never studied uh, music, choreography, and many other things, because we don't have any formal studies about these things. And then we started imagining uh, different uh, situations or different movements uh, to give life uh, to the songs. Well, by the way, you don't know. You may take traditional songs or modern songs, or you may, uh, you may make your own songs. That, that's what we did. And when you have to, uh, to make choreographies, then you know that you lack of a lot of uh, things. But as you don't only teach drama, that you have uh, other students in bachillerato or in cuarto de la ESO, etc., etc., then uh, you can't uh, ask for help. And there is always somebody, some students in, the, in your courses that help you. And that's good. And finally, one day, when they think they have been enjoying the class, doing different things that have no connection among them, you tell them that we have a play, that uh, the games are part of that play, that the, the dialogues uh, we wrote uh, with the games uh, are the introductions of the different uh, arguments of the play. And uh, they, then we start again. Mr. Sympathy is <coughs> saying, how nice, it's great, I love to rehearse, I love to perform. And Mr. Complains, I can't, it's impossible. Uh, I don't have these sort of things, I didn't expect it. And when you give them all the materials together, they get completely amazed. And they can't imagine that all those things have been done by them, most of them, except perhaps the sketches, okay? So, at the end of this time, yes, uh, they have had uh, some teachers, not only, the, not only the official teacher, but also our assistant, Lucas, the great help, all those students who help you sing and dance. But that's not. That's not all. While we have been working on all those things, at the same time, they have been writing a diary. At the beginning, a, a paper diary, because we didn't have uh, any tool to do something different. But later, uh, well, and at the beginning, every day we took pictures of the class. Uh, not only me, but them too. And uh, we took the camera to class. And uh, it was another way of motivating them, because everybody wanted to take pictures for the day. Of course, at the beginning, I let them take uh, all they wanted to take pictures of, but later I had to tell them to, to take only 10 pictures a day. Okay? I give them the pictures uh, in the second term, and then they started doing something different. They are diary. It's not uh, a boring written diary, or it's not uh, let me see, a traditional diary. And as they know more than you, don't, more than we do about that, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> All right. 
So uh, they have uh, a written diary, and now they have uh, this sort of diary. Uh, they have collected more or less uh, all the ideas, all the games, uh, all the things we have uh, done in class, and now they, they try to reproduce uh, what I have told you. But uh, they're doing it in a better way, not a very boring PowerPoint. That is what we know to do, but uh, with different uh, support. Okay, etc., etc., etc. And we have recorded all these things in class. Uh, but uh, time goes on and we can't uh, finish. Because we have to, to make or to prepare the self assessment. Uh, I prefer Maria Jesus's self assessments. I think that she has worked hard on that. Uh, but it's a way to make them aware of the things we have done the, the way they have done it. Okay. But this one is very good. We use that one with the first of the so yes, no, I think that one is very good because they have to to talk about their relationship with the other students and that is very good for them. For the younger ones. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Alright. Uh, and uh, there is a word I don't like is the word product. But the product in the product world there are lots of things. One of them is the performance that has been recorded, or the performances, because they have two different groups that have been recorded, and uh, the product uh, presented by the students. Uh, we do it, but we don't have time, so one day I show it to you, okay? And uh, all these things uh, is not, I think that all these things are not only to be collected uh, at our school, and to be told in these sort of presentations, but uh, it's very important for the kids uh, to have uh, a record of them, because when they grow up, when they become older, uh, they will remember that part of their lives as uh, something most interesting. But you know that we live in a crazy society, so we need permission, and we have to uh, we have to prepare a tenancy mix permission to be able to give them all these sort of things. Well, as I told you at the beginning, this is the way uh, we work in class, but uh, I remind you of my words. It's not only for the drama class. You can do the same in a different way at the history class, at the literature class, at the science class, at class. Sorry, this is say it's all words. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. While you are waiting, we are just playing the front. Vamos a dejar unos 10 minutos para, para preguntas. Eh, como habíamos dicho antes, entonces esperamos un poquito a lo que nos enseña Juan Carlos y hacemos las preguntas que queramos.